We're here at Vanderbilt Hall at Harvard Medical School in Boston, celebrating 75 years since Saul Hertz asked a critical question to President Compton from MIT, could iodine be made radioactive artificially? Saul Hertz's daughter was just a young child when her father passed in 1950. She was told of his pioneering work in medicine, but had limited knowledge beyond that. Today, she appreciates his profound contribution to the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid diseases and the paradigm change it represents. Preserved in the attic of her childhood home were boxes of correspondence, the handwritten data charts of the very first series of patients treated with radioactive iodine, journals and newspaper articles. Here on display is Dr. Saul Hertz's work documenting him as the first and foremost person to develop the experimental data on radioactive iodine and apply it to the clinical setting. Radioactive iodine is a tracer, a treatment for hyperthyroidism and the first targeted cancer therapy. Several prominent thyroid specialists and medical historians, including Jeffrey Mifflin, archivist with Mass General Hospital, have helped to review and organize this treasure. Saul Hertz was born on April 20, 1905 in Cleveland, Ohio, to Orthodox Jews who had fled Europe. He graduated from the University of Michigan with Phi Beta Kappa honors. In 1929, he received his MD from Harvard Medical School, followed by an internship and residency at Cleveland's Mount Sinai Hospital. He came back to Boston to join the newly formed thyroid clinic at the Massachusetts General Hospital in 1931. It should be noted that he was a Dalton scholar and that Jewish doctors were not allowed on the staff at that time. Barbara Hertz assembled this exhibit in Vanderbilt Hall at Harvard Medical School, which is the exact location where Dr. Saul Hertz originally asked the question that began the research. She spoke with Dr. Richard Wien from Tufts Medical Center to bring to light how this discovery has impacted thyroid patients today. From Tufts Medical Center, I'm a head and neck surgeon. Uh, my practice predominantly head and neck cancer, uh, but included in that is thyroid cancer. And it was nice to get an invitation to come to this kind of an event as a surgeon, which is non-traditional, which is nice, because the patients that I operate on benefit immensely from adjuvant radioactive iodine. The, the, the role that radioactive iodine plays in my patients, not only diagnostically, but also therapeutically, is huge. So for myself to see where it all started, the origins of this, and also see that it's rooted right here in Boston is, is very interesting. As much as we may do a total thyroidectomy and, and feel that we removed every bit of cancer or every bit of thyroid, it's almost like the, the analogy I make to a lot of patients is like taking peanut butter off an English muffin. You can get most of it off, but there's a little bit left behind. That little bit, that little bit of uptake is where radioactive iodine comes in to be critical as far as the treatment of patients with head and cancer, especially thyroid cancer. 